Hello, welcome to 50 Question Friday, episode number 10. Welcome everybody who's live here today. And again, you can put your questions under the question tab. And we'll begin with some questions here from the internet. So let's see, one of today's questions is from Lauren. Uh, in Michigan, is it beneficial to use multiple rings in one house? Such as I have one in the modem and one on the fuse box, and does it decrease the effect to add more? So, and then she goes on to ask about it. Does it affect to add more to things like the um, the electrical transformer box? And basically, if you have one ring in your fuse panel, that'll take care of the electrical transmission box that's um, outside in your yard. And as far as having a ring on your modem, on your Wi-Fi transmitter, um, usually what I would say is that if you are within a few feet of your Wi-Fi, then definitely have a Wi-Fi ring on it. And if you're not within that four to six feet of your Wi-Fi transmitter, then a golden fire generator is going to be just perfect. Um, because uh, she does mention that she has the golden fire generator in her home. So if you have the golden fire generator, that takes care of your Wi-Fi. Again, unless you're right in its immediate field. And as far as having a ring on your electrical panel, um, and that's another one of those that if you spend time within five and a half to six feet of your fuse panel, of your electrical panel or breaker box, um, that that is a detrimental electromagnetic field right there within that space. So if you spend time within that space, then yes, you definitely should have a ring on the electrical panel. If you're not spending time within that space, again, a golden fire generator, will cover all of the transmissions that are free floating through the air. Um, I still would suggest putting on a ring onto the electrical system um, because it does shift the energetics of the entire home. Um, and of course, there's a lot of people who claim cutting electrical bills. That's nothing that we claim, but um, it's in the testimonials anyway. Uh, and then Lauren goes to ask, which piece is the best to keep in the car on a daily basis? Definitely the golden fire generator is, is one to keep in, in the vehicle um, because the golden fire generators extend out a mile in every direction. So it's going to affect everybody as you are commuting. And then it's also going to affect when you are usually parked within a mile of your car for work, it's going to affect everybody there at work too. So a lot of people um, that commute a lot, it's just suggested just to keep the generator in their car and then that covers them while they're at home and at work. But it's a great thing to have on the commute for everybody else. And then the third question here is, which tool is best for dogs? And if they don't wear a collar all the time. So, you know, the, the small infinities are absolutely the best for for dogs, cats, um, to be wore on the collar. And if they, if they don't wear a collar, again, having a golden fire generator just in the home is going to cover them. Um, if you're wanting something a little bit more uh, potent to work on them, because this will cover, you know, these are like a sunshine and they're gonna be covering the entire environment, transforming EMFs, dense energy, all that fun stuff. But if you're looking for something that is more concentrated to work on a pet that has like arthritic conditions, whatever, that having a larger ring underneath of their space that they sleep is a fantastic thing for them. Um, so that is, oh, and then the last question from Lauren, if, is Mary Hardy having her conference again, the Temple of Saqqara? I don't know. I'm supposed to be going to the Temple of Saqqara, and I'm not sure if they've canceled yet or not. Hopefully not. I'm ready for road trips, you guys. So anyway, good morning, Christopher, 
Judy, hello, and Randy, Marsha, Marie. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. So before we go on to read the next question from the email, I'm just going to take a moment to jump into the heart space. It's been a really hectic week here at Twisted Sage Studios. Um, I have a lot going on. Um, so I'm going to take three breaths and drink coffee and the three breaths. All right. So just putting your attention to your physical heart where we carry our light. And then imagining your light dropping down into the heart of the earth, into the heart of Gaia. And then we breathe in that energy right up through the feet and into the heart. And I don't know if you can feel that shift already. Now then for the second breath of this Trinity breath is connecting into source, soul, creator, God, central sun, however you see and say that. So breathe in that unconditional love and energy of creation right into the heart. And the third breath is breathing both those energies together into the heart, mixing them together and sending them back out. So you are a column of light, you are grounded, connected, and you're moved into the heart space. Awesome. All right. So next on our 50 questions here. So this question is from Kathy. Can a tensor ring alone structure water? I have been reading the Dancing with Water book, and there are so many things needed from mineral salts, particular shapes and types of containers, filters, shakers, etc. Um, so, and then she goes on to ask um, if she doesn't have ac if she doesn't have access to all those, can she just use a plastic bottle and a tensor ring and still structure the water? Most definitely, Kathy. Um, to to structure water, so the tensor rings are going to be working, you know, the water rings are going to be working on the physical restructuring of water. It does not matter the container. So it's time that you need to leave the ring within the water, the ring underneath or on top of your bottle of water or your jug of water for four to six hours for the physical restructuring to take place. Now, the ring is going to energetically clean clear and start to activate the water on the energetic level instantly, um, clearing the, the, the memory of water, all that great stuff. But as far as the physical restructuring, doesn't matter the container, and it doesn't matter if your container is larger. So for this smaller golden fire ring, you can use this on a five gallon Culligan jug, and it will restructure all the water within that jug over that period of time, that four to six hours. So again, just simplicity. There's a lot more fine tuning we can do with the water. Um, you know, and Dances with Water has, you know, they, they talk about all kinds of ways that you can work with the water, um, you know, to, to fine tune it even more with the containers and the different crystals and everything else. Uh, for us, um, for what we have here at the studio, working with water, the Harmonic Creation Field Trio is one of the most fantastic sets of tools for working with water, um, just because it's bringing a lot of different levels and layers through there. All right. So, Christopher asks, I read on the website that the one inch golden fire generator is best for personal use and the, and the field isn't as far reaching as the larger ones. Can you expand on this please? You know, that's, it's, it's an interesting thing where the golden fire generators, it doesn't matter the size usually for the size of the field. I mean, the eight inch generator is the same potency as the four inch as the two inch. Now, when we get into the one inch, I'm not sure what it is exactly about the one inch, and it's actually seven eighths of an inch golden fire generator, that its field isn't expanding 
well, it isn't as tangible when you go out, you know, past a half a mile. It just doesn't feel as tangible. And that's something that we may be able to actually work on to tweak that so that it will actually hold that field and expand it farther. Um, I don't have a good answer for that one, Christopher. Um, you know, because we can see that energetically that that one inch golden fire generator is throughout that whole space of all of the larger golden fire generators. But to me, I just don't see it as tangible at a certain distance out. It seems to taper off more. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a good answer for that one, Christopher. Katrina is asking, I'm really interested and hopeful about tensor rings as a possible mainstream mainstream water healing tool. Obviously, this would take a while, but I think the first step would be more studies and research with water and tensor ring. Um, and then she's going to email the rest of the question. So as far as, yeah, working with with water using tensor rings is really a phenomenal thing to do. And it is one of the easier things that you can study is it's kind of like doing biofeedback on water because you can see what the tensor fields are doing with water. Um, and, and that's, it's a lot simpler than seeing what tensor fields do with humans. That's for sure. Um, so, you know, the gals at Dancing with Water do have some, some great studies and, and they can refer you to some of those. Um, and then there's been studies done by SLIM throughout the years too. Um, you know, and gosh, we really do need to get a really good study done with GDV in water. I mean, we have done it with a Hedica, the Hedica symbol and a drop of water and how it supercharges a drop of water within minutes. There's a little YouTube video on that um, called Hedica Energetics. But as far as the tensor rings in water for what we've done for studies, we have not done those biofeedback studies. Um, and I've always wanted to get a hold of those who worked with Dr. Emoto because um, Dr. Emoto's techniques, there, there are still people out there doing his work. And I would so love to see water droplets that are flash frozen and then looked through their molecular microscopes to see what the crystal structure of the water is doing under the tensor rings. I think it would be phenomenal. Um, and then Katrina goes on to ask, do you have info about studies or access to research? Oh, yep. I guess I kind of answered your question there. Check with uh, Dancing with Water. Um, then also, if you read, if you go to what's in a tensor ring, there is an article from the 2013 Tesla Tech Convention. Um, it's called What's, what's in a Tensor Ring? And um, there you will find... Uh, some more references to to those who have uh, done the scientific studies as well. Uh, Lucas asked, is the golden fire generator working for geopathic and electromagnetic lines also? I know that probably not for 100% sure. Um, how much can you say in your opinion? So yes, the golden fire generator, we totally see it is working with um, geopathic stress lines, geomagnetic lines. It is clearing the energy that comes through geomagnetic lines because our world is full of geomagnetic grid lines. Um, they're everywhere and they do carry information with them. And yes, the golden fire generators will clear that to, to clear any of the dense energies that follow along those geomagnetic lines. Um, and as far as geopathic, yes, it does work with geopathic, including aquifers. Um, because the, the tensor fields will go through the earth. I mean, so when we say these have a two mile sphere of influence, that includes down into the earth where they go about seven eighths of a mile down. Um, and so they're working with also portal vortexes. Vortexes are simply the intersecting of geomagnetic lines that create a vortex. So the golden fire generators are also working with non beneficial energetic vortexes from geomagnetic lines. 
And then as far as electromagnetic lines, um, and I'm not sure if we're referring to the same thing as geopathic and geomagnetic electromagnetic lines, because the geo the geomagnetic lines, again, it is a form of electromagnetics. It, it's an earth electromagnetics. Um, but there's also been, um, you know, for any like cell phone towers, things like that, that create a pathway between them because there's an electromagnetic line there. It's kind of like a grid line. And it will also clear up those style of electromagnetic lines. Um, let's see. And Bill, if someone lives across the road from a heavily sprayed conventional orchard, how might Twisted Sage tools protect that someone? So, you know, we have we have a good friend, uh, Marty Lucas, who's one of the master radionics guys, uh, you know, that comes to to teach. He teaches all over the world, a good friend of mine. Now, Marty has, out in Iowa, he has a organic farm, and he's situated right in the middle of all of, all of Monsanto land. Um, and so he's clearing his entire space. He uses our tools, he uses radionics, um, he uses other tools, consciousness. So with, with the conventional sprays, um, that's a tough one, you know, for, for people who are into commercial agriculture, who use our tools, we're always suggesting the um, seven inch harmony generator because the seven inch harmony generator has a sphere of influence of 12 miles. And that one is much more programmable. That one is working with the consciousness of the land, of the plants, um, and, it, and it creates that field of intentions. So what I would suggest, Bill, would be the seven inch harmony generator and put that just right in the middle of your space and put your intentions in there of keeping that clear, of transforming those sprays, those chemicals, and also with working with, with those sprays, those chemicals, the earth, the plants, everything, the bugs, working with all of those conscious beings that are within that field to also to help transmute that. Um, you know, we're very powerful creators. And once we step into alignment with nature as well, we can do some amazing, amazing things. And so that, that harmony generator, that seven inch is simply that interface tool for us to interface with nature and for everything else that comes into nature and to harmonize it, to clean and clear it. Um, and that's what I would say, Bill. Uh, Pam asks, can you expand more on doing grid work using ascension pyramids? How does this fit with existing ley lines, etc.? So we've been doing, you know, the, the grid work, working with the geomagnetic grid lines for, for several years, um, probably about nine years. And what what i discovered as a self-taught dowser was going out and using dowsing rods and finding geomagnetic lines finding the direction they travel um and at that time i was looking for ley lines now there's a lot of different geomagnetic grid lines all over the planet there's the hartman grid there's the curie lines um you know this goes back to the ancient chinese texts of the dragon and the tiger lines um so as far as working with any of the grids out there, um, you know, and for years we did the clearing of non-beneficial grid lines and we actually established the global love and gratitude grid in 2012, and which is just created with columns of light anchors. So to use the, the ascension pyramids on these geomagnetic grid lines that are already in place, um, we actually have some people out there who, who are doing that work. Um, they, for years, there's been people that have used the tensor field generators, taking them to places like Washington, DC to like CERN to the Vatican, all over the world where there were known geomagnetic grid lines that were diverted through the use of obelisks. Um, 
that they would actually divert these geomagnetic grid lines that would come into an obelisk and it would divert them into another direction. And so, you know, gosh, everybody talks about, and you can Google it about like Washington DC on how everything is set up in these certain points that are in alignment. Even all of your old churches and the old towns, they're all in a straight grid line. Um, so there's been people out there for years who have taken the generators and they've buried them. They found those grid lines and they bury the generators right in those grid lines to start to transform and transmute those non-beneficial grids. Those that were basically influencing people, harvesting energy, all the fun stuff. So when you use any of the ascension pyramids on grid lines, basically we're doing what we do with the light anchors is we hijack that grid that grid that has been set up and established through the use of your copper tops, your copper top, um, government, church, all that, as well as the obelisks. And um, basically, if you find where those lines are at, you put one of these, or these guys are going to be released here this next week. These little guys are cheap enough that you can just bury in the earth. And basically, once you put one pyramid on either side of that grid line it is creating that actual grid it's like a ley line that these guys are creating that line that goes between them and so basically we can go along um, i have a good friend in la county who is going out and gridding everywhere right now he is hitting all of the communication towers as far as like the news stations um, the cable stations he's going through and hitting all of those towers and what he's doing is he's finding that they were there lined up like 14 towers in a row he'll go and bury one of these on each side of those so that way it is within a line between those and that grid line that these are creating is intersecting all of those towers and transforming those and then you can also go out to places like our friends have done in Washington and Vatican and CERN and every place else is they'll find where those grid lines are at and they will bury these right in between there. So that way it is putting all of those old ancient buildings right there within that grid and transforming the energetics of them, their intended purposes. Uh, let's see. And Christopher, can the quantum grid connect or merge with the global love and gratitude grid? So when people anchor light, it will have these new fields in two. So yes, the, the gentleman who is out in LA County, who is establishing these, these grids, basically he's putting a pyramid in and he's also anchoring in a column of light. So it is bringing through both. They, they are, somewhat meshing together interlocking but really these ascension the the ascension grid as we called it when it came to be is bringing through everything that the global love and gratitude grid has put so much more so much higher um you know really using these guys to to do the grid work is is a lot more potent than than what the global love and gratitude grid was. And then Christopher says, also I anchor light columns at roundabouts, bridges, people's cars, etc. Will the global love grid hold this or is it limited to cell and water towers? Um, no, actually, so the global love and gratitude grid was one that when we first started it out, it could only go into communication towers and waterways um, that was the original intent and purpose of creating those light column grids on the planet was to transform, transmute, and raise the frequency and vibration of those. Not only the communications that come out of the towers, but then also all the waterways. Um, and then at that time for electrical grids, like your electrical substations or like let's say a, a wind power farm, we had to use different anchors of light because the global love and gratitude grid could not hold that. So anymore, as we brought in the golden fire and light wands, and we've been teaching people how to use the golden fire and light wands to anchor those columns of light. These guys were actually 
basically taking place of the global love and gratitude grid. The reason that we created that grid in the first place of those light anchors was because you create a light anchor and it will only stay for eight days unless you put your attention onto it. So we created the grid so that it would hold itself in place so that way that grid would stay for more than eight days. It would become permanent. But now then with the golden fire and light rods, these are creating a permanent column of light so they don't need to be attached to a, to an actual grid here because they are attached even higher. Um, so really the global love and gratitude grid was a phenomenal, phenomenal thing for the first, you know, six years or so that that was in being seven years. But then once these guys came along, um, we no longer need to use that global love and gratitude grid because again, the golden fire is containing all of that higher love and gratitude. I mean, the golden fire is, you know, that, that's unconditional love itself, that frequency. Um, Robert asks, you mentioned that your tools work best when we use intention. Could you recommend a type of prayer to work with particular tools? So the intention that you use with a tool does not have to be anything super specific or complicated. When you put a set of harmonic creation field trio rings over your water, you already have the intention of charging the water, of making that water better, all of the, the reasons why you even put the rings over the water in the first place are your soft intentions. And that's a, that even that right there is phenomenal. Um, now, when you're using the generators, you know, the generators in all the tools. So I guess this is how I would answer the question, Robert, is that all the tools that we create are basically those training wheels for us to use our own consciousness, our own light, our, our own higher intentions. So when we use the generators, um, we can program them with intentions, you know, like especially the harmony generators. You can put in all of your intention into this harmony generator and it will broadcast it out. Um, so the, the original um, way to program these with your intention is to go into the heart space and just speak your intention into them. Simple as that. When we're working with the water, let's say, and we put our rings around our water, we are speaking to the water our intentions for what it is that we would like. I mean, we can just have that basic, simple, passive intention, you know, when we put those rings there that we're doing great things for our water. Or we can get super specific and we can go into the heart space and say, okay, I would like for my water to carry the frequencies and properties that are most beneficial for, for gout or whatever. Um, or else you can ask it even more specifically to carry the frequencies and properties of like bergamot, of rose quartz, of tourmaline. You know, um, you can get super specific on your intentions, but the thing about that is, is that we then get more into our mind when we are doing the work. And so all this work that we do, if we can stay within the heart and make things simple, that really is the way to go. So, so yeah, Robert, anytime you're using the tools, make it simple, come from the heart because basically the tools and the fields that they create are up here on that level with our higher self. And so basically we're all in alignment, the fields of the tools, our higher self, us as the human, it, it's like we're all in alignment when we are, you know, just simply stating those intentions and, and the soul will do what is in the highest and best good. Uh, Lucas, which of your products protect from 5G, only gold and fire, not for example, harmony, balance and harmony. Um, no, the, the harmony, the balance and harmony generators are not doing that work with the 5G. Um, it, and it is the golden fire tools that are the ones that are transforming the 5G millimeter wave. Now there's so much about the 5G though. 
5G is simply a very broad term. It's the fifth generation of communication towers. Now, within there, there are the millimeter wave transmitters, which are, you know, all those things are horrendous, but they're very limited in their use and, and placing. Then there is the, the 5G um, towers that look just like the 3G, that look just like the 4G. I mean, from farther back, they all look the same. And they're, the harmony may touch some of those. Um, just depends on the manufacturer and what frequencies they're putting out. But to ensure that all the 5G, all the communication towers, the golden fire is definitely the one to use. But then Lucas also asked, what about only my intention or light anchoring without any tool? Yes, totally. We have the, um, gosh, what is it? The video called Light Anchoring 3.0. And in that one, basically, it gives you the attunement to the golden light rod, the ancient etheric tool that this is based off. And then it also gives you the activation of the sacred heart, which the sacred heart is the golden fire. That's why we call these the golden fire tools is because they are carrying that energetics of the sacred heart. And so once you go through that light anchoring 3.0 video, they can find on YouTube or else you can go to our resources um, page on our website and there's light anchoring and environmental clearing. There's a page there under resources. So when you do that light anchoring 3.0 where it gives you the attunements and activations, then you can just go out and not need a tool and start anchoring those specific columns of light that have the golden fire and that have the golden light rod in them. And those are totally transforming the 5G of all flavors and varieties of 5G, 4G, 3G. Um, so doing those specific light anchors is phenomenal. And again, can't forget there's also the wings of talk that also create a light anchor, which you can use those too. And there's a little video on the product page of using the wings of talk as well. Um, and then the, the other way for 5G is your Merkaba field reactivating your Merkaba. Do I have, well, I have these stars. So the Merkaba is basically that star geometry around the body. And again, on our resources website, we have the Merkaba activation. And, um, and then we have the, the entire website, crystalmerkaba.com attached with that. But um, so those are ways that you can totally work with 5G and all the different EMFs without having to have the tools. And Melody asks, hi, how, can you tell me if you have entity attachments and what tool clears and releases? <clears throat> how can you tell if you have entity attachments? Well, usually for, for people who are very in tune with themselves, you can tell whether you have an energetic attachment, whether it is a ghost, a wayward, or an entity, because they will influence your emotions. They'll influence your thoughts, thoughts that are not yours, emotions that are high emotions that just come out of nowhere. Um, those are a couple of the, the ways that you can tell. Um, you know, it's once you can see other people and you can look into their eye and you can see their soul, then you can start seeing into people's eye. You know, I usually look into the left eye and you can see that there's something standing between them and their soul when you look in the eye. So that's one way you can also tell with others once you, you know, worked with it and, and been, become sensitive to, to seeing that. So there really is no certain way to tell if you have an entity attachment or a ghost wayward attachment. Um, the tool that works best is the wings of talk. Um, and again, that's really the reason that we created this tool was for some, some energy worker friends of ours who had a hard time clearing entities. And so they, we made the wings of talk for them. So as far as our tools go, this is one of the more powerful ones in doing that clearing. Obviously the, um, 
the, the ascension pyramids that have these in them, the mini ascension pyramid, the, the ones actually the ascension pyramids that you can stand within, like the full size eight foot version or the medium sits pyramid that you can sit within is a phenomenal way to clear entities. It has all the tools in it that hold the space so you can sit within it. Now, the Wings of Talk is another tool that you can use for the entity clearing. Um, where the Ascension Pyramids here, the mini pyramids, are basically creating the same field as outside of the larger Ascension Pyramids. So these ones may or may not be able to clear entity attachments. I mean, they will for most of your lower level entities, waywards definitely, all ghost waywards, even your golden fire generators are going to clear them. But there are certain attachments that we get that are related to soul contracts that get a little bit more complicated. And a lot of times those you actually need somebody to go in and assist in getting that cleared out. Um, you know, that's the work that my sister Brenda does. She's under the, the distance healing. And that's, you know, that's what that's the work that Brenda does is helping people to clear entities while well, some of the work she does. Um, but, you know, I would say instead of if you don't want to get a buy a session with Brenda or you don't want to buy a tool and hope that it works, just go to the product page of like these guys and go through the meditation and create that space and see if that will clear it. Because I almost feel like it might be a ghost wayward. A lot of times the ghost waywards can grow in size and actually present as more like an entity, as a non-beneficial being. Um, that and just, you know, I would certainly suggest just trying more of our videos. Um, also on the ends of the 50, 50 Questions Friday, there's usually a five minutes at the end there where we do work. Some of the work that we've done inside of the Ascension Pyramid um, might actually do the work for you too. Christopher, so can the Ascension Pyramids hold a line at any distance, like a few thousand miles as shown on the grid pick on the website? Yes. This guy right here is connecting up to the pyramid that is in Japan, that's in Alaska, that's in Birmingham, Alabama, that's next door all around here it will travel all the way um, it covers continents and we actually have if you go to the ascension grid um, website or else you should be able to just google uh, twisted sage ascension grid now and it should pop up we also have another page that has just the map on it and it shows all the different pyramids all over the world and i've drawn in some of the grid lines that show the connection of them um, but yeah, those grid lines can go forever. We could shoot some in outer space, even if we wanted to. Could some form of leg extensions be added to the Ascension grid pyramids in order to sit under the pyramid? Um, that's a good question. Now, these guys, when you are under them, there is still a pretty phenomenal field. It's not the same field as the sits pyramid um these guys are meant to be a radiator out and they're meant to, they are meant to create that larger pyramid the size of your home and they're meant to create these grid points they weren't meant to create that same field within them and underneath of them as the the ascension pyramids do um you know it's still still a pretty decent field but the ascension pyramids that were designed to be within the pyramid, those ones are the ones that have that, that super potent field. Uh, Linda, I have a set of golden fire generator. I've sent a golden fire generator to my son in Texas. Does he and his family need to know any information in order for it to work completely? Oh no, not at all, Linda. Um, you know, these are working for people who don't have a clue they're even around. I mean, and that's why these things are shifting neighborhoods is because it is working with everybody within its field and, and always in their highest and best. So no, you don't necessarily at all need to know what the generators do or any of the tools do to be able to receive the benefits from them. 
Uh, Joanne, when my husband returns to his office after shutdown, which tools should he have with him with all the EMFs flying around? The golden fire generators, for sure. Now we have, and I don't have them sitting here, but we have several sizes of the golden fire generators. The two and a half inch is the most economical of them. Um, and as long as it's kept in a safe spot, like in the drawer or on a desk, and just left there, that's a perfect one. It's not meant for transporting every day. Now, the two-inch golden fire generator is a, is a more solid one that, and it's about twice the price, but it's a more solid build that can be put into like even my daughter's backpack when she goes to school, she carries the two-inch golden fire generator. So the golden fire generators are the ones for that workplace situation because it's going to be helping for more than just emfs it's going to be helping everybody within that field all of the dense consciousness all of the funny thought forms just all that dense energy in general um, so that can certainly assist uh, with everybody in the office uh, let's see and linda my granddaughter is living on campus at college which generator would be best for her and her environment? Uh, again, definitely the golden fire generator. Um, it would be, it would spread out far enough to cover, you know, most of that campus. Cause again, a mile in every direction. Um, and the golden fire generators are going to be working with just everything that would be in that college environment. You know, the, the harmony generators, generators are pretty fantastic and at the time that they were created before the golden fire came along the harmony generators were the one but the golden fire generators are just able to do more for people more for electromagnetics um you know and they do the same as the harmony generator does but so much more uh, robert my tensor ring is a bit wonky one ring is a bit elliptical and affects the whole symmetry Symmetry, does it need to be remodeled to work the best? No, not at all. Your tensor rings, the tensor rings are going to create the same shape of field as the shape of the ring is. That is why we make coils or infinities is because the way the physical ring is shaped is how the energetics flow um, or the shape of the field. So if your round ring is creating a column of light, if you squish this into a triangle, it's just creating a triangle. Um, it's going to be the same potency and same field. Um, and so, yes, so with the, uh, the larger, so then Robert went on to expound on that about having the larger golden fire rings, like the 29 inch ones. And again, no, if they're, if they're not, you know, on the same even plane, if they're bent up a little bit or they're not completely circular, no, they're going to be working just perfectly fine, just as if they were nice, beautiful, aesthetically round. Um, and then Bill, may a bucket of water be transformed into garlic bug spray using a harmony generator with intentions? So, you know, that, that is really an interesting concept of taking water and programming the water to be used as like a, a bug repellent. And, you know, it may, so basically when, you, when you're working with any of these tools, they're gonna to be working for the highest and greatest good. Um, and that's the highest and greatest good as perceived from a much higher level, not just ours. So from our perception, you know, maybe that potato bug shouldn't be in existence. But from the potato bug's perception, <laughs> yeah, it should totally be feasting on your on your garden. Um, but, you know, there's, I would say try it try to use the generator but instead of using the generator with intentions that you would drop into a bucket of water to make your your bug repellent i would also you know use that love for those bugs don't come at them with you know gosh you gotta get rid of these guys they're terrible um 
So when we've done the larger commercial farm um, experiments with like Japanese beetles, and we were able to basically create a pole. So we put generators outside of the field to create a harmonious space that would draw the beetles there. And then we would put the generators within the field to be more of a repelling space. So that way we weren't just pushing them out we were doing a push pull. It was a more of a harmonious way to work with them. Um, and so that's what I would suggest, Bill, is just to, you know, kind of consider the, the, the bugs in, in the work that you do with this and to try to create that beneficial space for everybody, that harmonious space for all. Um, and, and that's, that's just, yeah, that's totally what I would say. Um, I wish I could expound on that more and give you some more thoughts, but I I believe you can come up with some solutions on that one. Uh, Lucas, how do you see ghosts or other beings with your eyes or only extrasensory? Well, actually, a lot of times I will see a shadow go by, you know, and, and this was really apparent for for quite some time when, you know, cause we, we've ran through different time eras where there were more ghosts waywards running around. And then sometimes where there were very few, um, when I'd see a lot around, I would actually see out of the side of my eye, I'd see that, that figure go by, um, with my physical eyes. And it always happened outside of the shop because they're not allowed in, in, in the studio. So they have to stay outside where you can see them walk by, um, you know, that those that just couldn't come in that wanted to be crossed over. Um, but then, no, otherwise, as far as I see everything else, it is it is more in, in the third eye visual. Um, but sometimes it's hard to differentiate between because it is so vivid third eye visual for me that it is almost looking at it with your actual physical eyes um so yeah it's it's depends on how well attuned you are to those specific frequencies because there's so many let's let's take the physical light spectrum for example or uh, the, sorry the visible light spectrum for example that's a certain bandwidth there is so much other bandwidths of light all the tensor rings create certain bandwidths of light. There are so many different bandwidths that we're only able to perceive. That is the same with dimensions. Dimensions are simply bandwidths of frequency. Most of us can only see the physical density, this dimension. Um, and then there are many of us who can see other certain bandwidths. It's, it's all kind of what you're trained to see. So like for me, I, you know, I don't see auras on people, but yet I see ghosts, waywards, entities. I see other forms of energy, but I don't see these forms of energy. So it very much, um, it's kind of how you see into those different realms. Samson, hey there. Do you see a golden tensor tool or Taurus pendant coming in the future? Oh, a gold one. You know, no. I tell you what, the gold, that's what they told us when we started creating the regeneration ring and silver, you know, talk, the wings of talk, talk, the master healer of the blues. He's like, well, wait till you try it in gold. And so, yeah, someday we are going to start working with gold. Um, and maybe someday when we get ahead here. We, we really need to get some more high vibe employees here at the Twisted Sage Studios. Um, Cause we don't hire just anybody here. But right now we're looking for a polisher or grinder. And once we get more people to assist us with our daily operations in the studio, then we can start playing with more things like gold and a lot of the other projects that we have on the back burners. Um, so someday gold, yes, most definitely going back to 
the, uh, the chat over here. So I'm just double checking the chat. And cool. I'm glad you guys are all just chatting with each other. That's great. And so, you know, we do, and Christopher's asking about coming to assist at the, at the shop. So, you know, we have a lot of people who want to come and be, you know, just be trained, work here, learn the trade, all that. And I tell you, again, that's something that we just can't make the time to do that kind of stuff. Um, we are so swamped with ensuring that we are getting orders out within, you know, one or two days, because that's kind of our thing is that we want to get orders sent to people as soon as they order them so right now we are functioning number one as a manufacturing and distribution facility um once we can once we're able to have more of a base of of, of help that we can then start to do other things like make gold rings or hang out with people and train people things like that but for as far as hiring somebody to be here, we need somebody who is going to be here on a permanent basis and 40 hours a week. Um, because I tell you, we're like a family here. We, we cook, I mean, mom, Gma, and, and others here, you know, we cook lunches like twice a week. We have birthday parties for everybody and sing happy birthday. I mean, it's, it's, it's a family. And so, um, you know, we, we want somebody that is in here on a permanent basis who can handle the energy. And that's the thing too, that we don't hire just anybody is because throughout the years, I've had a lot of people that have worked here at the studio that just cannot handle the energy over time. Because over time, if you're not dumping your junk and you're working around these tools, um, you're not going to make it. Um, well, there's been a lot of people that just gone flipping nuts because they, their disparity in vibration and, and we don't want a disparity in vibration. We want to bring people in that are already there. Um, so anyway, as soon as we get more of the, of the, the right people and that's it too, is that when we, when we hire anybody, we know it, it's, it's a soul level thing. We, you know, but we do have to put out the the job service applicants and all that fun stuff. Um, and Judy, happy full moon eclipse to all. <laughs> Indeed. All right, you guys. Thank you for being here for the questions. Um, you know, I was, was going to consider doing some energy work today, but I think maybe going to hold off on that. I'm just not quite in the space to do what it was that I was intending to do, which is the Diksha. Now the Diksha is something that comes from the Indian tradition of sending divine light. Basically Saima taught the Saima Diksha blessing where you would run light into a person's pineal. And that is, you know, I used to set up and do Diksha blessings everywhere and teach classes on it when, when I first started my path. Um, that's what I did was the Saima Diksha blessings. And um, it just came to me the other day. Yesterday I was having a rough day because I haven't slept much this week. And um, I did a Diksha blessing on myself. And it was phenomenal. And, it's, and I had just remembered it. And so um, maybe next week we will do some a, a Diksha blessing where we will run that energy, that divine light, into the pineal. Um, for everybody here because it's a phenomenal thing but i want to do it in a different way and that's you know i was hoping that would come to me today but it's just not here yet to to, to do this um but uh next week anyway thank you guys as always for being here um the mini ascension pyramids or the sorry the ascension grid pyramids Pretty phenomenal. We'll be releasing these little guys, the grid points, very soon. Um, here probably over the weekend. So anyway, these guys are 
pretty phenomenal. It's just not a little piece of organite. These are connected to all of the pyramids and they're doing the same thing as emitting everything. These little guys are going to be around 30 bucks. Um, it's pretty phenomenal crystals in these. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for being here and uh, you're welcome to send in questions anytime. All right, take care.